In Ephesians 4, the Apostle Paul reminds the church that God's intent is to grow them up into fullness, into maturity, into the full stature of Jesus Christ. And he lets them know that in order to do that, God's given certain gifts to the body in the form of apostle, prophet, evangelist, shepherd, and teacher. These are people gifts that God gives to the church to equip the church to grow up into fullness into Christ, to equip them in ministry. And it's important to recognize that we need all five of these people gifts equipping the body of Christ in order to grow up into fullness. Now, when you think about a missional community, you're going to find that sometimes missional communities are going to have one or all of them in differing degrees of maturity or expression. And because of that, we want to pay attention to who God gives a missional community and where they're at in their development and be mindful that if they aren't yet quite developed, we may have to supplement some of that development with outside coaching or help. Let me just walk through the five and tell you how you can begin to tell whether or not a group is being equipped well in all five of these. The apostle really is the missionary, uh, the, the Greek word's apostolos, and when we translate it into the, to the Latin, we use the word missionary. That's the person who's thinking the sentness of the people of God, that they're thinking outward movement to bring the, the group outward, outside of themselves to bring the good news of the gospel, both in word and deed, to a people that yet haven't re received it or heard it. Uh, if, if you have a group that's lacking that, the group will tend to be an inward-focused group and tend to miss the idea that God's put them there to be his sent people into the world. And so you'll know a group is lacking that either in maturity or in expression because the group is never thinking outside of itself. Uh, the prophet is the one who pushes people down deep into both the word of God to be faithful, holy people, but also into the culture to be a people of mercy and justice who are willing to stay long enough and be consistent in acts of mercy and justice to bring change to the place God puts them in. If you're lacking that person, likely you'll miss out on some of the real expression of the tangible kingdom of God in forms of mercy and justice and care for the orphan, the, the, the widow, the broken, the needy. And, and oftentimes we'll need to bring that prophetic uh, equipping or prophetic voice back to a missional community when it's lost sight of the real needs of its city. If you're given the gift of an evangelist, you'll find that that person is regularly recruiting to the cause. They're regularly heralding the good news, calling people to Jesus. They'll often be the attractors in a missional community. And you'll find that if you have one of these, it'll be easy to grow a group pretty big because they'll always be inviting people in, always exposing people to the good news of Jesus found in his people. If you're lacking one of these people, you often will find that a group may have a hard time attracting people or adding to their numbers regularly. And so it'll be a key indicator that no one knew was coming or knew no new people are coming to faith because you lack the evangelistic person who also is equipping the body to think outside, drawing people in towards Christ. And then the shepherd is going to be one who's going to be thinking on the inward reality of the person's heart, caring for the soul of a person, making sure they grow up into maturity. And when you have these people in a group, you'll find a group becomes healthy in its soul care and its care for the hearts of people. If you're lacking one of these people, you'll find that the group could become hard or cold. And in some cases, we'll find, you'll find that they may be task-oriented or mercy-oriented or proclamation-oriented or movement-oriented, but they'll lack the real care care and in some cases you'll have a very unhealthy group because no one's taking the time to make sure the group members are being cared for well. And then you have the teacher and the job of the teacher is to take the truths of God's word and help people begin to apply them into everyday life. They, they do more of the systematic teaching and study, pushing people into the word to make sure we're faithful to obey it, to know, both know it and obey it. If you're lacking a teacher, oftentimes you'll find that there's a very low view of the word of God, a low view of the, the establishment of mature disciples in the word of God, and, and you may find yourself very busy but lose sight of why you're doing the work you're doing, lose sight of the grounding of the word of God that both informs what you do and motivates what you do. And if you do have a teacher, though, uh, and you're missing some of the others, if you have an overemphasis just on teaching, you might just become a Bible study. And each one of these has that potential to have an overemphasis. If it's teacher, it may just become a Bible study with little care for one another, little emphasis on evangelism, very little movement outward, very little care for the broken and the needs of justice and mercy in your city. 
If you have someone who's overemphasizing in the shepherd area, you may find it becomes a care group that just looks to love one another and build each other up, but misses out on helping those people see that part of growing up is being faithful to obey Jesus' commands as his sent people out to make disciples, calling people to Jesus, showing the world what it looks like to care for them, and then teach them the word of God as well. An overemphasis on the evangelist. Maybe that your group just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but no one's getting developed, no one's getting built up, no one's getting cared for. The group grows large in size, but very little depth, very little maturity, very little focus on anything but just being together and loving one another and being excited about bringing more people in. If it's overemphasized on the prophetic, it, you'll find that it will be very serious about the causes of justice and mercy, but oftentimes it'll fail to proclaim the gospel that can bring change to the real brokenness in the society or mobilize people outside of just one particular issue in, in culture to reaching the entire culture. They may even find at times that the word of God becomes secondary to the real needs of people instead of realizing the word of God speaks to the needs of people. And oftentimes in their desire to deal with mercy and justice, justice issues, they might not deal with the person, they might just deal with the cause and miss out on the care of the individual like a shepherd would teach you to do. And then if you have too much emphasis on the apostle or the missionary, you may find a group that's always going, 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 but never slowing down, paying attention to the needs of the group, making sure people are being established in the word of God, making sure people are being healthy and developed at the heart level. They may miss actually proclaiming the gospel because they're outgoing, but forget that there's a message they're supposed to proclaim while they're going. And in many cases, the, those who are primarily missionary, they might miss the the very, the very real needs of a society that are right in front of them that might be one of the best ways to demonstrate the good news of the kingdom breaking into the world. So it might be a movement people without any real change that they bring wherever they go. What we wanna do is we wanna see all five of those expressed in a missional community. Sometimes when you go into a group, you can just pay attention to what they're doing to show you what kind of leadership they have. And oftentimes the, the, the emphasis of the group will show you the maturity of the leaders they have. If it's overemphasized in one of those, you'll see it very clear in the ways I've just described. And then you wanna ask the question, how do we better see them equipped in a more full way? Uh, you, you may look at your group and go, we just don't have a lot of maturity in the other areas. We got a really good teacher, but we don't have the other areas very well established. At that point, there's a variety of ways you can go about getting your group better equipped and focused on the areas of weakness. It could be through bringing an outside coach that brings strength in one of the areas that you're lacking, uh, and hopefully that coach will help identify, do you have anybody in your group that is one of the, one of the gifts that you need to see matured in the group, and if so, there needs to be greater emphasis given to their maturity so that they can grow up in their unique gift to the church so they begin to serve the church in the way God intended them. So a coach can be really helpful. Uh, I encourage oftentimes that a coach who's strong at the area of weakness is the coach that helps them, or at least a coach has access to those kinds of people. So for instance, if you're finding your group has primarily become a Bible study that cares for each other really, really well, it's likely being led by a teacher shepherd kind of mix. So a coach should be able to see that and say, wait a minute, you guys don't have any focus on anybody outside of yourself. I don't see you sharing the gospel or bringing new unbelievers into your group, and you're not engaged very much in, the, in the, the needs of your city. So as a coach, then I wanna help you by identifying some people who are more mature as apostle, prophet, evangelist. Would you be open to having me bring them in to begin to give you some training that's more specific in the areas of your weakness and ask them to help identify in your group potential gifts that God's given your group that just haven't been developed yet? It may likely be that some of them are already in the group, but no one's taking the time to develop them and train them. So we wanna then identify who is in the group. Likely God's given the group everybody for a reason and that everything you need to do, God's given you the resources for, but it's a matter of stepping back and being a good steward of those resources and saying, who have we developed well? What are they as a gift to the body? How is that gift being utilized? Are they equipping us in the areas where we need strengths to be brought to the table right now? So a coach can be really helpful in that. A, a, an equipping paradigm can also be helpful in that a church might say, we would like to see those five aspects of maturity provided, uh, equipping for those five aspects of maturity provided for us. That there might be a, a strong evangelist in your church 
A lot of times churches miss this because a lot of times the evangelists go work for a parachurch like Young Life or Campus Crusade or somewhere else and they don't realize that they're in their church. They can call them in to begin to equip and train and oftentimes those people can quickly identify people that are just like themselves and they also attract people like themselves. So as soon as you give those people the opportunity to have a role in equipping a missional community or a role in equipping the church, they, they're gonna bring more like themselves both up into maturity as well as attract to the church. So you may ask yourself, what have we overemphasized at the cost of losing some of the others? And, and how can we be, give greater emphasis in our equipping strategies and in our identification of the gifts God's given us and in bringing outside help to bring training where we're lacking it? When you do this, you'll begin to notice that there'll be a push towards a new emphasis in the group and just be prepared for that because people are not used to that. It's gonna push against what they originally thought the group was about or why they joined the group in the first place and that's where we'll have to take them back to the scriptures and say, God wants us to grow up into the fullness of Christ and Christ is the perfect fullness of apostle, prophet, evangelist, shepherd, teacher and we have been given fullness in Christ because Christ in us is the hope of glory so to grow up into Christ means we're gonna grow up in all five of those ways. So we wanna help our people realize that's God's intent for their ongoing maturity. You may have to prepare them for that because they're gonna be pushed in ways they've never been pushed before. They're gonna be stretched in ways they've never experienced before. But the beauty of that is it will lead them to dependency on the only one who is perfectly all five and that's Jesus Christ. In the end, what they'll experience is Jesus becoming more and more fully expressed through their life and as a result, the missional community have a more full expression of Jesus Christ to the world.